Aloha, World Life family. You know, we've been in a 21-day fast, and today is day 21. Can I just celebrate and encourage and congratulate all of you, no matter how long in the 21 day you went, if it was just, you know, one day, I still celebrate you because that was a devotion and dedication to God. We have accomplished something already to start our new year off in a great way. And now I'm here to tell you, God has not only done certain things, but I want you to raise your expectation because your best is yet to come as we pursue an uncommon year. So I'm super thrilled about what God's been doing. I've heard story after story, breakthrough after breakthrough, and God's not done. You know what he does in a fast, sometimes he reveals it as we still move on beyond that 21 day fast. So keep your expectation up because we are truly living an uncommon year. Now remember, always, 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 your best is yet to come. And expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. That's why fasting, you know, has been such a great part of breaking out of ruts. I'm sure you've, you've seen that in your own life, maybe seasons of stagnation or breaking through or breaking off limits so that we can live in an overflow. I think this is a great day to, for me to mention his overflow in your life. That's what the uncommon life is all about. The overflow is living above life's limits. You know, now does that sound too good to be true? Well, everything that Jesus has ever done for us is that good and it's that true. See, the Bible tells us that we can live above life's limits. We can live in what the Bible points out to us as God's overflow. In fact, in John chapter 10, in the Amplified Translation says that he has come to give us life and life in abundance till it overflows. Wow, that's powerful. And that's exactly what we're all a part of in this uncommon year. You know, Jesus didn't come to give you um, barely get by amount. He didn't come so that he would have to scrape the bottom of the barrel because he gave it all out before he got to you. He didn't come to give you a minimum. There's an overflow. Overflow speaks of maximum. There's a maximum flow that God wants to uncork, uncap in your life. You know, God's blessing cannot be experienced by limited thinking. That's why it requires faith in God's word, trusting in the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, being led by his promptings and doing what he asks us to do when he asks us to do it. The good news is that overflow is spoken about all the way through the Bible. For example, you can hear it in this phrase, he crowns the year with his goodness and his past drip with abundance. That abundance refers to God's overflow. Now, to tap into what the new covenant has already made available to you and I, we must at times remove any and every known or unknown limitation. Maybe some of those during this fast have already been revealed and maybe a few more, I'm sure in my life, are still gonna be revealed because I want the best with no hindrance. I am surrendered and I want everything he has for my life to be revealed to me so that I can continue to move forward along with you. You know, if God shows you a limitation, he does so so that you'd eliminate it. That's so important, why? Because limits cause stagnation and rut living. Sometimes we don't see without times of fasting and prayer and continue to pray and there'll be times that you'll continue to fast so that we can see accurately. It's important that we don't put limits on what we can do. You know, I heard it said once, when a man puts a limit on what he will do, he has put a limit on what he can do. You know, it was the children of Israel, and I'm sure you've heard this, that says that time and time again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Imagine a way of thinking, a limitation, where we're limiting the sovereign God, the supreme King, Lord, creator, author of life, you know, in our lives. Now, a limit is like a veil. You may be able to see a little bit, but not clearly. That's why we always need times of prayer and fasting because it involves the Holy Spirit. Limits conceal personal capacity. Let me talk to you about personal capacity for a moment. Uh, let me give you an example. The Holy Spirit revealed to the Corinthian church through Paul the Apostle a limitation that was limiting their capacity that they had come to accept, that come to embrace, that come to live. And without knowing it, 
they couldn't see what was hindering their lives, maybe their jobs, maybe their marriages and all the relationships they had, even their ministry. So Paul went to visit them and of course he ministered to them under the power of the Holy Ghost and great things happened. And, but he also sat down and had a little coffee with them and listened to their words, heard their stories, you know, uh, observed their, their attitudes and heard how they were doing life, saw how they were doing life and, and they began to express their feelings. While well, sometimes afterward, the Holy Ghost prompted him to write this, what's called the second letter to the Corinthians. And in part, I'm gonna just take a portion now because this points to what I'm talking to you today about concerning our capacity. He said to them, the smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you're living them in a small way. Open up your lives and live openly and expansively. Now imagine being the Corinthian, they just had the great Paul the Apostle sometime before that, personally there, ministering under great power, Yet the Holy Spirit reveals. Now hear what I'm saying, the Holy Spirit reveals. The Holy Spirit reveals. See, Paul was a prayer and a faster. And so it's important that you understand that the Holy Spirit's revelation was to help them break out of a limit they couldn't see, nor did they know they had. He was helping them increase their personal capacity, their ministry capacity, the capacity of their marriage, the capacity of everything that they were involved with. He was helping them to grow in their potential, to live out the overflow that God had for them. See, if you don't know what's limiting you, how will you remove it? It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to you from time to time. Your capacity is not set, but thinking small can set your capacity. You see, what was the limit of, or the uh, capacity limit of the Corinthian church? Well, it was small thinking. Their small thinking was producing small living, which was hindering their capacity. Oh no, they were functioning now. They were functioning, they were going to church and they were doing life, they had their jobs, they had their marriages, they had their children, but they were functioning at a level of capacity, but not in full capacity. Let me show you what I mean by this. Little small story I once heard. An old timer saw a boy fishing and he went over to see what he was doing. And the boy had already caught two small fish. Well, as the man was walking over towards this small boy, he saw that he had landed a huge, huge bass. And it was big, it was beautiful, and it was amazing. The old man said, that's amazing. Suddenly the boy tossed the fish back into the water. <laughs> that old man put his hands up to his head and said, what are you doing? That was a whopper of a catch. And that little boy said, well, yeah, replied the boy, but my frying pan is only nine inches wide and that bass wouldn't fit in it. To me, that story was funny. See, how a person thinks can limit how he lives. See, God's big plans don't fit in small thinking. Paul's encouragement wasn't just to call it out. He said, open up your lives. I'm sure the Holy Spirit has been stirring you, encouraging you during this time of fasting and prayer and more and more is gonna come forth because God wants to make changes all the time to bring out our greatest capacity in Him by the power of the Holy Ghost. Change does not always have to be drastic to be effective. Maybe a shift of focus, attention, or a concentration here and there, just a little bit more of this, maybe a little less of that. It's the little foxes the Bible reveals to us that spoils the vine, but the principle is it's the little things that also help the vine to grow. It's the little things that produce the harvest. So I want you to be encouraged today as we you know, close out today on this 21 day fast because God is still continuing to deal with us in supernatural but uncommon ways to uncap our capacity because your capacity isn't set and your best is yet to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each and every person thanking you for their life. We celebrate today, Father God, Today, Lord God, we have received or are going to receive communion, Father God, together to seal the deal of what you've been doing in our lives. And we are so grateful for how you've spoken to us and continue to speak to us. Lord, as we continue on in this uncommon year, continue to lead us, guide us, and instruct us through your word, through your name, and by the power of the Holy Ghost and we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I celebrate you once again. 
go out and eat your steak or burger or whatever it is now. <laughs> so either way, we are excited. Thank you so much. Let's continue in pursuit of an uncommon year.